Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-45. When last we listened in, the quartet of Grish, Sir Omel, Brother Stance, and Harris the Mage were wandering around Tigos Vale while they awaited word on their friends who were in the care of the witch, Sarcona. After touring the mining town, they found themselves at the docks watching a ship called the Republic land. As they opted to head back into the inn, a flamboyant man found them, and after a tense standoff, he gave Grish a kiss and a brutal hug. We rejoin them as the Zenobian and the ship's master are laughing. Tears rolled down the large men's faces, and Grish looked at his companions. My friends, I am sorry, he stated in between laughs. It is my great ple well, displeasure to introduce you to one of the finest scallywags you'll ever meet, Captain Apair. The sea captain bowed deeply to the trio and smacked Grish in the chest as he rose. Captain General Apair to you, landlubber, the man exclaimed. Grish and Apair bowed deeply to each other and began laughing again. After a few moments of horseplay, the two caught their breath, and the cleric explained that Apair was one of the first people he had met in the Denali mainland. He is actually the one that brought me from my homeland to this blessed region. He was always a true friend, until he upped and went sailing south, leaving me stranded among these people. Apair interrupted and commented about how the large oaf had his nose so far up the king's but was cut off quickly. He stammered and pointed out that he shouldn't be too rude to people he had just met, but if they were hanging around with Grish, then they were either daft or good-natured. He stared at the group until Harris chuckled and replied, good-natured. The captain nodded in thanks and asked if the group wanted to grab some food and drink, his treat. Grish roared with laughter and pointed out that if Apair was buying, he was certainly drinking. Stance and Omel agreed to eat with the old friends, but Harris pointed out that he needed to study and wanted to check on Yolanda and Phidias. The mood shifted, but Harris assured them that he would let them know if he heard anything and that they should go have fun. Apair asked if the slender man spoke Denali, and after some arcane words were spoken, the Comprehend Languages spell took effect, and the wizard answered him fluently. Apair wiggled his fingers at Harris, stating, Ooh, a spellcaster, but stopped as Harris raised one eyebrow. Apair backed off, pointing out that he was only joking. The mage excused himself and headed back towards the inn. The rest of the men turned towards a nearby tavern, and Apair asked Sir Omel if Harris would have turned him into a frog or something. Omel smirked and pointed out that being a frog would have been the best thing to happen. Apair pointed at Omel and began to laugh, then shook his finger at the warrior, stating, I like you. No bullshit, only results. I will enjoy drinking with you. A short distance away, Apair announced that they had arrived. The sign above the entrance showed it to be the brass dinghy. A ruckus was heard inside, and Apair spread out his arms and backed the group up just a little as a drunken miner came crashing through the door. A pair of drunken sailors yelled out that the bar was closed to sailors only and slammed the door shut. Captain Apair opened the door and motioned for the others to enter. Brother Stance looked concerned and pointed out that they were not sailors. The flamboyant friend of Grish grabbed him by the shoulders and said, Laddie, they will not bother you, or they will deal with me, before shoving him into the raucous tavern. Harris crossed the deserted streets and reached the Miju Inn, where they had stayed the night before. As he reached for the door handle, a tug came on his robes. 
Looking down, he observed a small child who advised him that Sarcona wanted to speak with the friends of the injured. The mage nodded and pulled a gold coin from behind the ear of the amazed girl, who ran off gleefully. Harris hurried to the edge of town to Sarcona's hut and knocked. The spindly old woman opened the door and allowed him entry into her abode. Two cots sat along the far wall, and each contained the bodies of the friends. Speaking in the language of the Denali, the witch began to explain that the pair would live and could even travel by tomorrow. Yolanda Two Blades blinked her eyes and quickly sat up. Seeing Harris, she flashed a smile, but quickly began to look around in confusion. Sarkana closed on her, whispering softly that the warrior was safe. Calm breezed across her face as the smile reappeared. Her visage quickly changed as she observed the unmoving figure of Phidias. Is... is... is he dead? She asked the old woman, who replied with a shake of her head. Close, but not dead. Your associate will survive. Green poison nearly took him, but Sarcona is stronger. Yolanda shook her head and rose slowly, reaching out for Harris. She asked about the others and was told that they were present and awaiting news of her recovery. She apologized for being a bit unsteady on her feet and asked when Phidias would awake. Sarcona shook her head, pointing out that it wouldn't be until tomorrow morning at the earliest, suggesting finally that Yolanda get some food into her system to regain her health. The fighter nodded and asked if Harris could take her to the others, which he obliged. He retrieved a small gem from his belt pouch and held it firmly in his hand before nodding and stating, This way. As the pair crossed town, the mage could tell Yolanda was still wobbly. He asked if she wanted to return to the room that they obtained, but she confirmed that Sarcona's recommendation of getting something to eat would be better. As they reached the brass dinghy, she looked up at the mage questioningly. He shrugged his shoulders and pointed out that the others should be here. Yolanda looked at the ground where the passed out miner was still lying in the street and mud and looked back at him. His hands raised, he could not offer an explanation. As she reached for the door, Harris put his arm on her shoulder and warned her that there may be an addition to the group. Puzzled, she pulled open the door just as a tankard of ale smashed into it, spraying her with a dark liquor. She quickly pulled forth her twin short swords and leveled them at the patrons of the bar, who immediately fell silent. A moment later, a soft clapping could be heard from the corner. As the duo entered, their eyes became accustomed to the lighting and observed a pair doing the clapping, with bright smiles on the faces of Grish, Sir Omel, and Brother Stance. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.